Now, your next storyteller, usually people, when they come and tell stories on the Moss stage, they uh, stand. But our next storyteller is uh, 97 years old, and when you are 97 years old, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> In 1939, I was 22 years old, straight as an arrow. <laughs> and I was newly graduated from Cornell University and was a, did many things, but I was part of an experiment. I was a research subject. And one day, our leader said to me, his name was Dr. Richard Parmenter, he said, I am going to be the new director of flight research at Cornell the, under the CPT, the Civilian Pilot Training Course, under the CAA, a federal program, and one in ten can be a girl. He said, I, and you can learn to fly. And I said to him, Dr. Dick, I've never been in an airplane. <laughs> And he said, well, let's go, try. <laughs> Down to the Ithaca Airport in a yellow cub, Piper Cub, on a beautiful October day, October 16th. Uh, he took me up into this absolutely wonderful new world of sky and land below. And the air was full of sunbeams. The land below was clean and borderless. And the lake, the, the blue lake of Kiuga water, which extended to the north, and on beyond was this circle of land meeting sky. And I was just overwhelmed with the beauty of it, of the earth and the sky, and signed up right away. <laughs> it was chosen, and... Uh, uh, spent the next few months learning how to the fundamentals of flight, and that is important. <laughs> <laughs> In May 1940, I received my private pilot certificate, and that would allow me to take up passengers. I only had less about 40 hours. I don't know how they dared go up with me, <laughs> but they did. And so I lived with this wonderful new experience. Now, 1941 December came along quickly. And, and uh, after Congress declared war, everyone able-bodied was needed in the war effort. And everybody needed training. And there was a flurry in America, an excitement, a... Uh, a determination to fight this new enemy. Well, we knew the enemy was there. But I mean to fight and to produce aircraft and to uh, train men. And Jacqueline Cochran, who was a famous American woman pilot, had a program in mind that she sold to General Hap Arnold. <clears throat> And in the program, she would train women pilots the same exact way that the male pilots were trained and, and have a supply of women who could then go out and do the housekeeping jobs in America, the training and the ferrying and so forth. And she sold this because we were very short of pilots. And they were needed desperately as the planes were being produced in the factories. And I wanted to be nearly as I could to the fighting war. And I applied for her program and was accepted. And I found my way to Sweetwater, Texas, 200 miles west of Fort Worth. And here I met my classmates. I'm a class of 43.5. There were 18 classes all together, so I was an early bird. And learned to fly primary, basic, and advanced. In our last few months of training, Ten days before we gradu I graduated, my best friend, my buddy, Peggy Sipe, was killed with her instructor and a fellow WASP pilot, Helen Joe Severson. And no reason was given for the accident, 
There was no ceremony held. They just disappeared. And it was a heart-wrenching event. And Peggy had left a garden, the only garden any wasp had ever grown had in Sweetwater, Texas. And she planted seeds in the hard Texas soil in the hot Texas sun, and it bloomed on our graduation day. Jacqueline Cochran came to give us our wings and presented them to me, thanked me, and uh, wished me well. I was pleased because I had won my wings. <laughs> More training came into the picture. And I was sent to the Lockburn Army Air Base in Columbus, Ohio. And here, to my astonishment, were over 180 B-17s, Boeing B-17s, Flying Fortresses, the big four-engine plane that was flying raids in, over Germany with the 8th Air Force. And the, the uh, new CO of our squadron, Major Freddie Wilson, had received a telegram only two days before and said, expect 17 women pilots for training. <laughs> and he said, my God, what am I going to do with these? I'm a bachelor. I said, I don't know anything about women. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was. And my first, very first ride in the B-17, um, I'm in the left seat, the instructor's in the right seat. And this is Lieutenant Logue Mitchell, later became good friends. Uh, number three engine caught on fire. And uh, before we knew it, he'd given me orders, and I knew enough, and we, the two of us, the fire was out. And I said, oh, my goodness, this is the plane for me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was an exciting time, because the, 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 the pilots were returning up from their 25 missions in, in Germany, and, and uh, they came back, and they would tell us about the real war. And the real war was tough. Then my orders sent me down to Florida, Buckingham Army Air Field. And here we were asked, ordered, to fly the plane, the B-17 again, with the student gunners and their instructor on board. And the... the, the, uh, the Mission was to train the gunners to fire a, at a moving target from a moving platform. And this was a routine that we did day after day, mornings this day, and afternoons the next day. And it was glorious because some days the sky, with the clouds and the sea itself would meld and there'd be no horizon. And this is when you had to trust your instruments to fly straight and level. This lasted for the rest of the time I was in the service. And in December 44, while the Battle of the Bulge was going on and the war in Japan was not over, hardly started, we had a letter from Hap Arnold, General Hap Arnold, saying that our program was going to be canceled, terminated. Congress had not appropriated the funds. It was a blow. Here we thought we were doing a good, a good job. Our, we felt the war wasn't over, and the message we received was, girls, go home. We don't need you anymore. So we packed up. No ceremonies. No, just farewells to our friends in the base. And off we went to new lives. And years later, 30 years later, after all of the civil rights acts and so forth, there were women military pilots. And they were allowed in the Navy and the Army Reserves. Women entered the, the uh, academy in 1976 for the very first time. And I thought of, of Peggy Sipes' garden and the seeds that were planted. And I think perhaps that took 30 years, but yet women had persevered 
and were accepted now as the military women pilots. We were volunteers coming in and we were volunteers going out. And uh, our motto was, we live in the wind and the sand and our eyes are on the stars. Aww.